All right, so let's talk about null spaces for a second. Um, so trouble is, uh, with this particular topic, uh, I'm going to define a thing that doesn't make any sense yet. Uh, so I'm going to define a null space. And I'm going to say the null space of a matrix A, which I'm going to write as N of A. And the null space is going to be the set of X's such that AX equals zero. Get all good with this? Stop makes sense. Okay, so let me let me conjure up three examples here real quick. So first example of something that maps to zero is going to be what is affectionately known as the crushinator or the zero matrix. So I'm going to call this matrix Z for zero. What is the null space of the matrix Z? Couldn't it just be any matrix? Or ah, so any vector? Vectors, right? So I'm thinking A is an M by N matrix, right? Which means that it maps R what to R what. I'd say M to N, but I don't think that's quite right. Yeah, let's think about multiplying it by a vector, right? So if I'm going to take a matrix A. Oh, yeah, it would be M to 2, right? Or depending on what dimension the vector is in. Yeah, so like, I'm, going to, I'm going to multiply A, M by N, times a vector, right? Mm -hmm. A vector is a something by one dimensional matrix, right? Okay. So what's the, what's the number of rows here? N. It's got to be N in order for this to work, right? So this takes N dimensional vectors and then this outputs some vector B, right? What's the size of the vector B that's output here? M. M. Okay. And maybe I'm going to, I'm going to throw a couple more words at you. Uh, R N here is also known as what if I think about A as a function? What's the input space for functions called? Starts with a D. Dimension? Damn. Close. <laughs> Dimension is going to be really important here. It's got an M in it. And it rhymes with plantain. Damn tain. Damn tain, exactly. The damn domain. All right, so everybody's with me that the, the space of vectors that, some, that a function takes is called the domain, right? Now, what's the other side of this called? And this is where you're this is where you're allowed to be wrong because we lied to you before. What's the other side of this usually called? Range. Yeah. Uh, we oftentimes call it the range. Uh, it is in fact the codomain because the range is the set of things that actually get mapped to, right? not the space into which you're throwing darts. Does that make sense? Like if you think about a function as a, I mean, I like to think about a function as like an old school blunderbuss, right? You know what a blunderbuss is? It's like an old school firearm, black powder based, big wide barrel. You can just like stuff crap into it and then pull the trigger and it just like launches nails and crap. So, I like to think of a function that way because the domain is anything you can fit in the barrel. 
the codomain is anything you can aim at, and the range is anything you can actually hit. Does that sort of follow? Like I can aim at a mountain over there, but the range ain't gonna get there. You guys see that? So the in this case, right, the null space that I'm talking about is gonna be a subset of the domain, right? And what I'm really talking about is which things in the domain go to zero in the codomain. Now, this zero matrix function, right? What vectors does this thing map to zero? All of them. Perfect. So the null space of this zero matrix is all of our two. What is the range of the zero matrix? Just because I brought this to zero. Good. It's just the zero vector. What is the codomain of Z? Zero? Mm -mm. Not what are you hitting, but what are you aiming at? What space are you aiming at here? What kind of zero vector are you getting out of this thing? M dimensional. Good. I I'm guess... looking for the dimension. How big is M in this case? It depends on the matrix that we multiply. Well, it has to be two. Yeah. So in this case, right, I have a two dimensional by two dimensional matrix, right? So this maps from R2 to R2. Now, does it hit everything in R2? No, it just hits the zero vector. Does that distinction kind of make sense? This is, I'm borrowing a little bit from a couple of days from now. We're going to talk more about ranges and codomains in a couple of days. So if that's not totally making sense, don't sweat it. But the null space should be making sense. If I take this zero matrix and multiply it by any vector x, y, I get the zero vector, right? Okay, here's another one. Uh, I'm going to call this one px for reasons. What's the null space of the PX matrix? If you need to, a good idea to kind of fiddle with these is to just kind of off in the margin, say, all right, I'm going to take my vector PX, right? I'm going to apply it to a vector XY. And I'm wondering, when do I get the zero vector, right? You get it when you have the vector zero y. Yeah, anytime that x is zero, right? You guys all see that? OK, so the null space here is the set of vectors zero y with y in And I'm going to have a tendency to just write zero y. Like I might just write that vector out, or I might write c times zero y. You guys, kind of with me on this. I'll have a tendency to do that just because I'm sloppy. Um, what's the range here? What's the range of p of x? Zero. Let's see. So I certainly can hit zero, right? So zero is definitely in there. That's good. What else can I, what other vectors can I hit with this thing? When I do this, right? When I actually apply this, I get the vector that looks like X and, uh, whoops, not X and Y, X and zero. So this is all the vectors I can get, right? So I might write, this is the set of vectors that are look like, that look like X and zero with X and R. 
you might notice that the the null space, right, is the whole y-axis, and the range is the whole x-axis. Why did I call this thing px? Does everybody know a word for this matrix? We did this a little bit in Calc 3. It felt a lot different, but we did this in Calc 3. Give you a clue. It starts with a P. Is this partial derivatives or take No, but that's a good guess from the notation. That's our, like that that's certainly something I could have been implying with this notation. Do you guys remember doing this a lot in Calc 3 where we smash stuff? I can't remember the name of it, but yeah. Projections. Yeah, this is the projection onto the x coordinate. Right, this takes the whole vector space, the whole R2 vector space, and just mashes it directly onto the x-axis. Guess with me on that? So this is a projection matrix. All right, and last example, identity. What's the identity matrix look like? One, zero, zero, one. Good. In R2, it's 1, 0, 0, 1. So what's the null space of the identity matrix? When X and Y are both the zero. Cool. If only there were a more convenient name for the vector where both entries were. Zero vector. Yeah. Very nice. So you might notice R2 has the zero vector in it, right? The vectors that look like zero and Y have the zero vector in them. And the zero vector has the zero vector in it, right? Oh, that's why they call it a null space. Because it's the space of shit that gets smashed. Right? It's really all the vectors that get mapped to zero, and it's a subspace. So it's null because it's getting mapped to zero, and it's a space because it is a subspace. You guys see that? Do you want to see a more complicated example, or do you want to see that this is a vector space, a subspace? What is that, Grayson? That's the zero vector. <laughs> That's awful. I hate it so much. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have the chat open, but uh, Grayson says it's the another name for the zero vector is the vector x y with x plus y equals zero and x times y equals zero. <laughs> it's just hateful. Just hateful, man. <laughs> All right, let's let's do a slightly more complicated example here. All right, so let us consider. Uh, let's consider the matrix one, two, three, six. Are you with me? Okay, so. Um, the book shows this without augmenting. I'm gonna I'm gonna very explicitly augment just so I can uh, kind of demonstrate that what I'm doing is I'm solving a system of equations. But you don't have to do the augment part. Um, so I'm gonna try to calculate the null space of this matrix. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take my matrix one, two, three, six, and I'm gonna wonder what gets mapped to zero. And I'm gonna augment by zero, zero. Okay, how do I deal with this? You guys did some of this on your test. You're good at it now. What do you do? You do some row reducing with like some stuff about a pivot point. Cool. So let's just perform some row operations, right? So 
you can do this by hand. You can do this with a calculator. I don't really care. Um, I'm going to do this one by hand because it's pretty easy. Uh, I need to get that three to be a zero. So I'm going to do the operation. The new row two is the old row two minus three times row one. What's so that? Three... Go ahead. Won't that give you a zero, two zeros on the bottom? Mm, it might, yeah. So let me look here. So if I do that, I'm going to be subtracting three. I'm going to be subtracting six. I'm going to be subtracting zero, right? So I'm going to get to this. One, two, augmented by zero, and my bottom row is zeros. Okay, so what this means is that the set of things that get mapped to zero look like x plus 2y equals zero. You guys see that? Okay. So that looks like x is minus 2y. Oh, okay. I was confused. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. So if x is minus 2y, then my vectors that I'm looking at, right, the null space, is the set of vectors with y and minus 2y with y in r. Good. Okay, so now this gets really cumbersome to write. So frankly, I'm going to kind of do something else. I'm going to stop fiddling with this with y and r crap, and I'm going to use a span. So I'm going to write down that this is the span of the vector minus 2, 1. Does that make sense? You guys know what a span is? Oh, okay. So if I haven't talked about a span already, a span is just the set of all the linear combinations. And when you span a single vector, you get all the constant multiples of that vector, which is exactly what I'm writing here. These are the same thing, just written in different notation. You guys good with that? Okay, so that's the kind of, uh, there's one free variable, right? So I had a free variable, I picked it to be something, Right, so my free variable was y here, and I picked it to be 1 and then put it in a spam. So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to write it with set builder notation. Doesn't matter. Pick one. You guys good with that? Okay. Any questions on the idea of null spaces thus far? Kind of. So when we do that uh, vector of negative two y uh, y and we do that on the matrix one two three six we will get out the zero vector yes correct okay yeah so let's try it just for kicks right so we've claimed that it's the span of these kind of minus two one so let's do a quick sanity check Let's take our vector one, two, three, six, and we'll multiply it by some vector minus two C times one C. Right, this is any old vector in that span. All right, so, hmm. How do I do this? pick that vector up, turn it onto the side and multiply straight down into the columns. Yeah, okay. So I need to take the first row and dot it with the first column. So that's gonna give me um, minus two C plus two C, I think. And then the second row dotted with the first column is gonna give me minus six C plus six C. Seems legit, feels like the zero vector to me. Um, the reason that I can get away with a span, right? 
is that I could re I could rewrite this first thing as one, two, three, six times the scalar C times the vector, oops, that's not the right vector, minus two, one. And then we can pull that scalar out, right? So that's gonna be the scalar times the vector one, two, three, six, minus two, one. And then this crap's gonna be the zero vector, right? And C times the zero vector, still gonna be the zero vector. That's actually kind of why this is a subspace, right? Like that's checking the constant multiple part of the subspace idea. The, the addition part of it is just that when you have a matrix times a sum of two vectors, you just apply the matrix to each vector and then add them, right? All right, any other questions on this? Would the range on that be negative two to one or? Oh yeah, so the, the range on this one is gonna be all the vectors that I can get out of this multiplication, which we could, which I hesitate to tell you right now because it'll take punchline from next time. Um, I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna give you a hint and then we'll look at it next time. So if you want the range of this vector, of this matrix one, three, two, six, think about the column multiplication picture. And then I'll, I'll double check your understanding when we get to this in a couple of days. Uh, yeah, it'll be a day or two. Cool. I just don't want to, I don't want to steal my punchline from next time. So 